Good afternoon. Welcome to Brick City. This is your host, The Real Charlemagne. Hey, this is a show I recorded earlier this year. So, you know, some of the times might be off, but it's a good show. I don't think many of you guys heard it um, because it aired early around the Christmas time, around the New Year. So a lot of people were busy. So um, I just want you to sit back and enjoy this interview with a longtime friend of mine, Mr. Andre James. And, you know, just just enjoy the, the conversation. And like I said, I want to give a shout out to my family and friends that continue to support me, you know, through the pandemic, through my trials and tribulations. A hey, shout out to y'all, the listeners. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Definitely don't forget to follow me on my platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, The Real Charlemagne, or Brick City. All right, so here we go. We're about to start the show. See you soon. Welcome back. Welcome back. Once again, this is uh, your host, The Real Charlemagne, with Brick City. Uh, we got Andre James on the line. Hey, welcome to the show, Andre. Hey, good, good afternoon. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time out this busy day to, to hang out with us. Hey, um, first and foremost, man, um, hey, was this 20 years now we've known each other 20 plus? <laughs> Telling our yeah, age, but you know, <laughs> hey, you know, hey, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be yeah. here. Um, but uh, well, what you do, Dre, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, and and tell us what what made you want to write a book? What made you want to become an author? Oh, okay. So, first of all, foremost, man, I'd like to say thank you for. Um, having me on in Brick City, um, really congratulations on your on this radio show. I'm excited for you. <clears throat> um, I think it's going to be a great year um, for Brick City. You're going to be impacting the community. So, you know, thank you. Not only you're a friend, but um, you're also a community leader. Um, you you do what you say. <laughs> um, so um, I, I really appreciate that. A um, little bit about myself is yeah i'm a i'm a country boy <laughs> um I, I currently live in columbia maryland but i am from um uh, what they call a little town called grifton north carolina so i have a shout out to grifton north carolina <laughs> um pitt county um also in grifton high school so mm -hmm. um <clears throat> small town but rich and a lot of values a lot of you know we, we country we agriculture we we, we kind of blue collar but that kind of helps me um, to develop the grit, to develop the, the, the hard work that, that kind of made me who I am today. So, um, right, right, right. So, yeah, you know about that. You know about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> um, so, um, so, why did I write a book? You know what? Um, Someone asked me about 2020, like, hey, you know, what a, what's a word for you? What's what's something that came out of 2020? Like, and the word that I used was revealing. Like, you really don't know. Not saying you don't know who you are. You don't know your abilities until you could, until you bought into a situation or right. you right. in. And this pandemic put us all in a situation. So what revealed out to me is yo, I, I, I can do this, you know, um, I can do a little bit more. So after the George Floyd incident, Breonna Taylor, um, you know, I just wanted to get into action mode. You know, we all had all these emotions, um, anger, um, what's going on. I just wanted to be in action mode. So, um, so yeah, this came to my, um, this, this project came to me. Um, I said no a couple of times, <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> I said no. I, I don't know why it was. Maybe it was just time constraint or just you know just just writing. But I, I think it was it was neat. It was really important. Yeah. Um, so so, uh, me, so not not to pause you right there. So um, <laughs> do you think no was a part of you know that that background from? The country where it's like just kind of keep stuff to yourself and and just kind of exactly. you know just be close knit. Don't don't share with the world. You think that was the reason 
You said no initially? Yep, exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> saying no because, you know, you're kind of taught and trained, like, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, politics or issues, you know, kind of just keep it to yourself or, you right. know, those conversations you just have at home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. And uh, so then another thing is, you know, when you start to speak up, you don't know how people are going to take it. You know, gotcha. people going to agree with you or disagree. So yeah, there's some, you know, some a little bit of anxiety into that as well. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So, um, you know, I, 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 um, I read the book, uh, actually a part of the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like I said, uh, it's definitely your, your chapter is definitely powerful, brother. Um, and, um, basically what, what made you choose the topic you you spoke about? Well, and well, the subtitle was revitalization, education, and representation um, for men. And you know, I was just trying to figure out what to talk about, different things in my life, and um, mm. I wanted to be truthful. I want to be transparent. I wanted to kind of tell a story of some some struggles I went through or pain, but you know, give some type of solutions. And um, I just kept thinking, I'm like, wow, it just hit me early on, like what helped shape me. Um, and so I, I just talked about um, from an education perspective um, mm -hmm. from high school. So, um, okay. Um, so uh, there was, for me, it was trauma. It gotcha. was, it was more of, um, <clears throat> no, you can't do it. And right. it kind of stripped my self-esteem, you know. Um, okay. Okay. And then I just want to talk about the journey of like, how do you build that back up? <clears throat> right, right. Okay. So basically, you know, with the uh, education piece and, and the confidence, <laughs> You want this that's a story you wanna encourage people that you know the no is not the end all. You know, the the Exactly. Yeah, that you could you could regroup from the no and, and someone not, you know, being on the up and up with when it comes to your, you know, to your education and, and life, you know, that, that final say is not their final say. It's your final say. Exactly. And yeah. You, and you control your own. Yeah, you, you control your own narrative. And like I said, um, speaking on that, um, Andre, you know, uh, is that, you, you consider that a uh, mindset change that you had to readjust your mindset to say, okay, well, you know, I was told this, but I'm going to do this. Did you have to change your mindset? How, how did you come up with the internal, the internal fire to say, hey, I'm going to change this? In, in, from the information that was given to you earlier in your life? So, um, just give people the ba background. So, <clears throat> um, I think it was my junior year in high school. Uh, I had a meeting with my guidance counselor and going through your career plans, what you want to do, um, what your education goals, you're going to go to a four-year university, community college, you know, military, and so on. So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I chose, you know, four-year four year university, you know, that's where I wanted to go. Um, and sh in essence, she said, no, you, you, you're not, you're not smart enough. You're not, you mm -hmm. haven't taken the classes. You're not, you're not smart enough to go to college. Wow. And it didn't sit well with me. So mm -hmm. to answer the, the question, the first thing is like, I just didn't accept it. I don't, I don't know what it was. I was like, this ain't right. I just felt like this is, was not fair. It wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, and I remember, like, it's so clear to me, like, not only I remember the conversation, I remember walking from her meeting. Like, I remember walking down the hallways back to class wow. and just like, yo, this ain't fair. What if I work hard? And I just kept repeating it over and over again. What if I work hard? What if I work hard? This, and I, I still have that memory <laughs> going down the hallways, even with the high school, yeah. like, this ain't yeah. fair. So, yes, that kind of triggered the mindset that mm -hmm. was already in me, like, um, and I talked a lot about 
um, our high school, how we, we had a culture of just winning. Right. That's what we did. Right. Like in sports, we, we won. We, it's, it's either you win a championship or, or nothing else. So yeah. with that, playing sports, being around um, that culture where we win championships, but we worked hard. Like um, our coaches didn't really have to push us that hard. We had right. talent, <laughs> but also we, we, um, we, just, we just had it. Yeah, we just had it instilled in us. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, we didn't want the people above us to come back and talk junk. Like y'all are. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, and I, and I think that's, you know, that that's definitely built a lot of character because mm-hmm. it was more like, like I guess as today, street cred, we had mm-hmm. athletic cred. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, like, yo. Y'all don't win, you know, like, yo, the older, the older cats, they looking back at you like, yo, mm-hmm. what y'all young dudes doing? You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. so that pushes you even harder. But it's like, I think, like you said, you know, we had that piece in lockdown, you know, with the, with the athletics. But um, the education piece definitely, definitely was missing um, in, in a sense. I mean, I, I think we had – a fair education in a sense, but mm-hmm. like I said, it wasn't, a, uh, we, we didn't have the same push in the classroom. Exactly. Nope. Um, as we, <clears> we did not. Like, as we did with athletics. Um, you know, and like I said, I, you know, I, I know I could have been a better student if I had, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's like growing up, man, you know, our parents working, we, you know, we, we practicing, Mm-hmm. two or three hours after school our parents working they just get home we get home everybody tired it's like hey you know you, you just try to grab something eat go to bed mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying you go knock out your homework you're gonna do whatever but it's not those conversations to say what we're doing on the next level you know what I mean what, what, what yeah. what's your plan you know it's not those 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 family conversations at the dinner table where you you know What's, what's your plan mm-hmm. graduating or whatever so we can start developing that plan you know and I think that's what we lack um, in our community man um, I mean like I said it was a great great experience growing up but like I said it was just just those little narratives that our parents you know they had to go through they had to work you know what I'm saying so yep. that definitely that definitely played a part um, fast forward um, Andre you went to a uh, HBCU, and I, I'll let you announce the HBCU because I'm sure we got some, some, some <laughs> fans of that of that school on this <laughs> show today. So I'll let you tell the, the HBCU that you attended, and um, tell us a little bit about your experience at HBCU. Oh well, first of all, I want to say Aggie pride to all the Aggies out there. Um, uh, yeah, I went to North Carolina a and State University. Um, Wow, my experience was was awesome. It was it, it was it was wonderful. Um, you connect, you meet some great brothers and sisters from all over the country. Um, you, um, it's like a family. Like one thing I would say about going to HBCU, going to A and T, is it was it was more, more like a family. The professors care. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple of professors like really cared and invested in me and like. Um, it's like an extended family <clears throat> away from home. Um, but I would say this, um, based on my high school um, education experience, like what we talked about, like we wasn't really, that wasn't a culture. So I kind of talk about this in the book. My first semester was tough. Like oh. I was not prepared for college. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was yeah. hard. I mean, so, so in that, in that instance, did you think that the council was right or you, you were that much more determined to prove her wrong? I would say the counselor, it, I was, well, one, <clears throat> I had this conversation my junior year. That's a problem. Gotcha. Okay. That, those communications, you know, plans, this and that should be done. You know, so you start off your freshman year, so on and so on. So I don't want to just focus too much on my love in Griffin High School. That's my school. Mm-hmm. But it didn't help us. Right. As a four is, 
hey, you're a student. Where's your strength and weaknesses? How can we help you out? Um, you know what I'm saying? Did this, we didn't have all the tools that we have yeah. today. Khan Academies and <laughs> all the different apps to, 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 to help you out. <laughs> or have teachers yeah. in game. And we didn't, you know, we didn't do that. Um, and um, mm -hmm. so, you know, after school, you go to the football field. Yeah. Basketball, you know. <laughs> um, what I'll say is, I, it's more of the value of ENT, how HBCUs will, like, you not, this is where you are, but we're going to get you there. Gotcha. <laughs> so I started out with, I think, a 2.5, 2.3 GPA. Like, you know, all my cousin made C's and D's. Like, I see, like, yes. You know, <laughs> my <laughs> freshman, my, my first semester. But then I ended, like, you know, for three years later, my final semester, I had a 4.0, and I finished yeah. there, awesome. I think, uh, I don't know, three, four, three, five GPA or so. Right. Um, it, that's, to me, that's more the value of an HBCU, value going to the right school that fits you, that have right. professors that's going to not help you, encourage you, but just kind of speak life into you. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, that, that's definitely a um, plus. That's what we need. Um, I think uh, some HBCUs get bad names um, because it's not the HBCU. The students make the HBCU. <laughs> That's exactly. Why, you know, and, and people, you know, tend to give them a bad rep, you know, party or whatever. But mm -hmm. like I said, you know, the people that's complaining are typically the one kid that didn't make it or <laughs> not a little bit too hard. You know, exactly. It's yeah. unfortunate, you know, but like I said, hey, you know, that's when parents come into play. You know what I mean? Like, hey, do your work, you know, have a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't party every night, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I'm glad you, you know, you made a success story out of a bad beginning, bad situation, because it's like, like you said, you know, I know you guys, you know, I, I won that track star, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you guys win the state championships in track and, you know, all this other stuff. And like I said, you know, I play, I think we played basketball together mm -hmm. a freshman year. Um. Uh. But like you said, we but we had a rough year that year. Coach Whitehurst. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, remember old I think we won by, yep. like one game the whole season. <laughs> but, uh, but, I, but like I said, that was you know. But you know, like you said, varsity was snatching everybody up to varsity. So you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was some fun times though. So uh, you know, just uh, just continue to move forward. Um. What do you do now to encourage uh, people that you feel have had that stump in their life, that little somewhere someone has said, it has put a negative vibe on their life? How, uh, how do you reach people now and, and try to, you know, help them through that? Well, you know, you know, I just, I, I just try to continue to motivate people. Uh, one thing, just ask some questions. It's, a lot of time, you know, we move and behave certain ways and we don't know why. Right. And my thing was I have a conversation with um, people, especially young people, is why? Like, you feel this way, you feel you can't, so you feel you can't go to college or you're like, yo, I'm not good enough, why? Why? And I ask the question, why? Then by doing that, you kind of unpeel some things and for them to like, oh, because somebody told me I couldn't, or they may have a le legitimate um, response, then, you know, we can kind of work there, but just having conversations, motivating them, um, just continue to ask questions for them to see, like, oh, this, because some, some barriers we put up ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and so, and it, and, it, and it kind of ties into, I just really try, not, using motivation, but also, like, help shifting their mindset to think differently. Gotcha. Yeah. That's cool, man. Uh, I know you. Um, I know we know our time is time is getting low, um, but yeah, I know you. You, uh, you was a parent before you was a parent. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? <laughs> hey, because uh, like I like I always I always pick on you. Is like we uh, uh, you be talking to you and then you be like, you know, you got a kid at the house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like Dre, what you just went to the grocery store and picked up another kid? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, so tell us about that experience, man, because that, that's, you know, that's the thing a lot of people 
<laughs> fail to, to realize how important it is to mentor and to, uh, you know, and, and give life to other people that's having struggles, you know? So how was that experience? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, it was good. It was organic, something that I wasn't prepared for. So I always tell people, my wife, she's an educator. At the time, she was like a third grade teacher. And I tell people every 10 years, my, 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 my wife bring a child home. And then we're like, oh, we fall in love. And, you know, relationship just bloomed. So um, it was, or, you know what, it's, it's more like, I guess, just real compassion and love. You know, mm -hmm. when you see a young kid that has a lot of talent, you know, that's really have a good heart and character, but based on the, their situation, life situation where they had no control, you know, you can't choose, you know, where you, where you born and where you live. Yeah. Um, but um, just, just meeting that, meeting that need, you know, just loving the kid that, that needs, that needs it. Um, so it, it was, it was fun. Like I said, it was fun. It, it was, I can say it was too, too, too much challenge. Uh -huh. But it was um it was really good. Um, but um me and my wife we just if there's a need she's a real educator. Okay, like, okay. she's not like a wife, teacher. Uh, she's a real. She's a, she's a principal, correct? Yeah, currently she is. Now she's um she's a principal okay, okay. at this middle school in, in Maryland. So um so yeah, that's what we we, we try to do. Just try to help kids, uh, okay. show them, you know, show them love, passion, and. Um, and just help them to reach their goals. Gotcha. Hey, that's that's definitely a blessing, man. Um, you know, we need more people like that to, like I said, bring and encourage. You know, like you said, you guys. Like I said it was like <laughs> you had you had a daughter. You know, before you had a son. You know what I mean? You had you was you was helping raise a kid before you was like I said. It's like you you have kids. You know. Older kids, and your, your son has older <laughs> siblings. You know, like you said, yeah. sometimes it's not about the biological. Sometimes it's just about the nurturing and the, and the togetherness. Togetherness, um, yep. Yeah, because like I said, they they one unit, man. They definitely, um, if if anyone didn't know, they would think that they all siblings, you know, by blood. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, like I said, yeah. yeah, that's that's definitely a blessing, man. And then, um, so what what are you currently doing, um, Andre? So I'm currently um, I'm currently working on a couple of projects. Um, you know, still working on the next book. So we got a couple of um, books going on for for this year. Mm -hmm. I still want to focus on um, helping young kids, especially young boys, to to transition to manhood and talk about leadership. I want to talk about entrepreneurship, and of course, you know being financial um being you know better financial stewards uh so that's that's a couple of things i'm working on and <clears throat> um and also you know just continue to help small businesses um you know part of my background in ac federal acquisitions uh, is to help businesses especially small business understand we call it the game gotcha understand the what we call the, the the procurement process, which is not easy, it's complicated, um, but there's value once you understand it. And there's a lot of that's a lot of opportunities, a lot of money in federal contracting. Right. So yes, continue to kind of grow there and assist small businesses. Okay. All right, man. We look, we about to have to wrap it up here. Um, so uh, how can someone reach you, Andre? Oh, so I have a website, um, be a man, lead a man .com. That's be a man, lead a man .com. Um, you can, uh, all my contact information is there. Uh, of course, I'm all, I'm on social media, um, on Facebook, Andre James, um, O N D R A Y James, J A M E S. And just reach out to me. Um, if you have any question, you know, just hit me up and I will, I will respond. All right. <clears throat> And um, one more thing, man. Um, before we before we get out of here, what what's uh, what's what's one of your goals for twenty twenty one? I'm put you on the spot. What's one of your goals <laughs> uh, outside of the book? What what's what's another personal goal or or community goal that you would like to reach? Well, one personal goal is get better health. You know, and that's inclusive exercise, dieting. 
stress management. So just my personal health is just one go. Mm -hmm. And um, two, just um, I guess another goal is just to continue to help businesses, you know, reach out to some of my, I guess network better. That's it. Gotcha. I just want to be more strategic on my networking. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, man, look, I appreciate you, Andre, taking the time out on this busy day uh, to spend a little time with me. This old, this old guy from, from <laughs> eight. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah, appreciate I, that. I appreciate that. And um, thanks, everyone, for listening today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Like I said, we'll be back next week. Don't forget to follow me on show, social media, Charlamagne McCarter on IG, Charlamagne McCarter on Facebook. And once again, it's from the Bricks, Brick City. Holla at y'all next week. Peace.